Hello, this is 8.1, part 2. Uh, we already covered pages 1 through 3, so now we're on page 4 of this section, which is objective number 2. Using properties of inverse functions to find exact values of certain composite functions. Alright, so we looked at sine, and we know that the inverse sine's domain is negative 1 to 1, and its range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So now we're looking at how do I solve something with inverse sine? Well, you have to use its inverse function. So if you're using inverse sine, you want to take the sine of it. And if you're using uh, sine, you want to take inverse sine to solve it. So that's where these composite functions or nested functions come in. Uh, you have to be very, 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 very careful on these. Uh, you got you got to be careful because depending on what the nested function is, that'll determine what your answer is. So if we look at the first one, it says sine inverse of sine of x equals x. That's what I'm looking at right here. The embedded function is regular sine. Now the outside function, however, is inverse sine. So if you remember, the answers or the range has to be a value between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay? So, if your embedded function sine of x, they can have values in quadrant 1, 2, 3, or 4. So this causes trouble because your answers can only be in quadrant 4 or quadrant number 1. Okay, so what do you do? You have to move the angle if you get an angle in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. Okay? You also have to know if you get an angle in quadrant 2, sine is positive there. So if you get an angle in quadrant 2, to make it fit into the range, you have to move it to quadrant number 1. If you get an angle in quadrant 3, that's not okay a bit because sine is negative and that is not in my range. You're going to have to move that to quadrant 4. Okay, so you have to be very, 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 very careful. Once again, if your embedded function is a quadrant 2 or quadrant 3 angle, because it is outside of the range of my answer for inverse sine, I have to move it. Positive angles move into the positive quadrant. So in quadrant, uh, quadrant 2, sine is positive. Therefore, it moves to quadrant 1. If you're in quadrant 3 where it's negative, you move to quadrant 4. Okay, the next one. If my embedded function is sine of negative 1 of x, as long as that value is a value between negative 1 to 1, I'm okay. Uh, I can't do anything about it if it's not. So if it's inverse sine of 2, then I can't do the problem because it is not in the domain. So the moral of the story is you can move angles but not values. And this only holds true, this little saying is just for these composite trig functions. Okay. So you'll hear me say, hey, we can move angles, but not values. Okay, so let's go ahead and move onward. Find the exact value of certain composite functions. Find the exact value of each of the following composite functions. Part A. Inverse sine of sine of x over 8. Okay, first question is, what quadrant is this in? Because I see I have an angle in there. You can do a trick, you can, uh, if, I mean, if you know what quadrant it's in, you're fine. But if you don't, what you can do is change this to degrees. So if you change it to degrees, you want a value between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. All right, I know that this is quadrant number 1. And because quadrant number 1 is inside my range of inverse sine, which is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, I'm okay. Okay, because I'm in quadrant 1. 
All right, so since that's the case, if you take the inverse sine of sine of an angle, that's in quadrant one, these two cancel each other out, so your answer is just pi over eight. Okay, no problems. Let's look at B together. They want us to take the inverse sine of sine of five pi over eight. All right, uh, five pi over eight, I can tell you is not in quadrant one. But let's say you didn't know that just by looking at it because that's not one of the 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90 uh, radian values. What we can do is we can be clever. We can change 5 pi over 8 into degrees by using the formula 180 over pi. Okay, we're going to cancel some stuff out here. The pi's cancel out. Uh, 2 or 4 actually goes into both of these, so uh, 4 times 2 is what 8 equals. 4 goes into 180, 45 times. 5 times 45 will give me 225, and then in the denominator of 2. Okay, so if I split that, I get 112.5 degrees. Alright, I know I'm in quadrant 2. This is a problem. I need to move it into either quadrant or one or four depending on what sine value is in quadrant two. If you can use all students take calc if you want. So in quadrant two, sine is positive. Okay, so once again, if I'm in quadrant two, I need to move this into quadrant number one. So how do I do that? What you do is you take pi and you subtract the angle from it. The angle in our case is 5 pi over 8. So this becomes 8 pi over 8 minus 5 pi over 8, which will give me 3 pi over 8. Okay, so once again, I move this to quadrant 1. Why? Because the range of inverse sine has to be a value between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Uh, 5 pi over 8. Is, is not in that range, it's in quadrant two. So I have to move it to quadrant one. So since I moved this, now I can do the problem. Inverse sine of sine of three pi over eight, that's okay. These two cancel each other out, so the answer is going to be three pi over eight. So once again, I can move an angle. Uh, that's okay, I can move those, but I can't move a value. So let's see what a value looks like. Let's do the next example. It says find the exact value, if any, of each of the composite functions. Okay, so it says exact value. Do not use a calculator. Uh, what does this mean? First of all, because inverse sine is the embedded function, I gotta check to see is the value 0 0.5 okay? And the answer is yes, it is because the domain is negative one to one. Okay, so we're good there. So since that's the case, now I can work the problem. The signs will cancel each other out. And what I'm left with is 0 0.5. Okay, next one. The embedded function for sine of sine inverse at 1.8 is inverse sine. So the first question I have to ask is the value 1.8 okay? It is not because the domain is negative 1 to 1 of inverse sine. 1.8 is outside of the domain. Okay, I can't do anything about this. I can't move it. It's not an angle. It's a value. So when that happens, the answer is no solution. You can write it as a zero with a line through it, but it doesn't have a solution. All right, next, we're going to look at the inverse cosine functions. And I'm going to apologize to you because it's a little wonky, but we're going to keep on going here. Uh, cosine. So we've done sine, and we know that sine's domain is negative 1 to 1. The range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which is quadrant 4 and quadrant 1. Let's see what happens to cosine. So here's a graph of cosine. Hopefully you can 
graph this in your sleep. Uh, but we're going to have to do something here because it is a function. That's not a problem. But it flunks the horizontal line test, which doesn't make it one-to-one. -one. So it's not one-to-one -one right now because when y equals one-half, we've got problems. It hits the line more than once. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that. So being that said, I have to restrict the domain of the regular cosine function. So let's go ahead and do that. To do that, remember the rules are I have to have one quadrant that's positive and one quadrant that's negative. So if I restrict it down right here, I have that situation because now we have values above the x-axis that's positive. And by the way, that is quadrant 1. Remember, quadrant 1 is 0 to pi over 2. And uh, pi over 2 to pi is actually quadrant number 2. So we have one quadrant where cosine is positive, that's in quadrant 1, and one quadrant where cosine is negative in quadrant number 2. Okay, so what is the domain? Once we restricted that down, your domain remembers all possible x values. So the restricted graph, it starts at 0 and includes 0, and it goes to pi. Quadrant number 1, quadrant number 2. The range is now negative 1 to 1. We didn't change that because we didn't affect the height of the graph, just the width. Okay, what does that graph look like? The graph looks like this. So we have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, two pi. All right, but remember, I'm only going up to pi. So what does my graph look like? It looks like this. Starts at 1, which I didn't write in, goes down to negative 1. So this is my restricted graph right here in blue. All right, it's now one to one, so you're all set. So, to write out what, what's the domain and range of this again, the domain of the restric restricted cosine function uh, is zero to pi, and the range is uh, negative one to one. Okay, so for inverse sine or arc sine, by the way, you can put the word arc, that means the same thing. So for inverse sine, remember, whatever the, the domain is becomes the range, and whatever the range is becomes the domain. Okay, so the domain for inverse cosine is negative 1 to 1. Well, that's nice because that's what inverse sine is as well, so we left out there. But the range is different. It's 0 to pi. And once again, quadrant 1 you're, you're going to have positive angles in quadrant 2. You're going to have values that are negative. So they need to be placed into quadrant 2. So quadrant 1, positive values go there. Quadrant 2, negative values go there. Okay? So that's what this is saying. Once again, what is my domain? It's now negative 1 to 1. What's my range? 0 to pi. Quadrant number 1. Quadrant number 2. Okay, moving on. So being that said, once again, we have to go through the same process we did for sine. One, you got to check to see if the value is in the domain. And two, you uh, decide if that value is positive or negative, And then you can determine where it is. Is it in quadrant one? Is it quadrant two? Okay, so first things first. Is the value zero okay? Well, yes, because the domain is negative 1 to 1, so 0 falls in between those two values, so the answer is yes. All right, now that we know that it's okay that way, we got to figure out where does cosine equal 0. Okay, I know it's not the triangles, because remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and I don't have any value that I'm going to get 0. What I'm going to look at is the unit circle. And if I look at the unit circle, I see at pi over 2, cosine is 0. Okay, so uh, cosine 
or inverse cosine at zero will give me the angle of pi over two. So once again, inverse functions are asking you what angle corresponds to my given value. All right, now, just like sine, you can have embedded functions. These actually allow us to be able to solve things because they are the inverse functions. So if cosine is inside, is the inside function of inverse cosine, then I have to have my angle must be in quadrant one or quadrant two. Okay, so remember, if it's a positive value, you want it in quadrant one. If it's negative, you want it in quadrant two. So what happens if I don't get a value in quadrant one or quadrant two? If I don't, then I have to move them. So if I get a value in quadrant three, all students take calc. Cosine is negative in quadrant three. Then I have to move this to quadrant two because I want that value is negative and it has to be in the quadrant that corresponds with negative values. Okay, now the other possibility is I could be in quadrant four. In quadrant four, cosine is positive. So if I get a quadrant four angle, I have to move it to quadrant one. All right, so once again, if you get an angle, you can move them, but you can't move values. So the problem child is the first definition. Second definition, the embedded or nested function is inverse cosine. So the only thing you have to check is you've got to make sure that x value is in the domain, which is negative 1 to 1. If it's not, you can't do it. Once again, we can move angles, but not values. Okay, so once again, the statement only holds true for nested functions. All right, uh, let's go ahead and look at A, B, C, and D, and then uh, this will be the end of this video. So let's look at A. Cosine inverse, the inside function is regular cosine. And I see there that we have pi over 12. Pi over 12 is in quadrant number 1. So if it's in quadrant number one, and by the way, if you don't know that, then once again, change it to degrees and you'll see it's in quadrant one. So it's good because remember cosine inverse, the domain is uh, negative one to one and the range is negative, or sorry, no, it's not it's zero to pi. So as long as I get a, you know, an initial value in quadrant one or quadrant two, I'm okay. Uh, so, we're good. So what happens is the inverse function will cancel out cosine, and I'm left with pi over 12. Done. Okay, so that's A. B. B says I have cosine on the outside and inverse cosine on the inside, and the value is negative 0 0.4. That's a value. So all I have to do is check to make sure it's in the domain. The domain for inverse cosine is negative 1 to 1. Negative 0 0.4 is in that value, so what happens is we're good to go. So all I have to do is cancel that out. All right, so I'm canceling inverse cosine whoops, with cosine. So I get negative 0 0.4. All right, C. C says the inverse cosine, and then inside function is regular cosine, but it says negative 2 pi over 3. Okay. Well, we got to figure out what quadrant negative 2 pi over 3 is in. Remember, you're moving backwards. So this is negative pi over 2. This is negative pi. This is negative 3 pi over 2. Uh, being that said, negative 2 pi over 3 is actually in quadrant number 3. So since negative 2 pi over 3 is in quad 3, which is not in my range, because remember my range is 0 to pi, I got to move this. Okay? In quadrant 3, cosine is negative. So I need to move 
to the quadrant that has negative values, which is going to be in quadrant 2. Okay? So once again, this was negative, so I have to move it to quadrant 2 because that's where cosine uh, range is, and that's where it's negative. Right? Negative values go in quadrant 2, positive values go in quadrant 1. All right. Uh, we can do a trick. If we remove the negative sign, I get 2 pi over 3, which is in quadrant number 2. So voila, there you go. Okay, so now let's do the problem. Cosine inverse of cosine of negative 2 pi over 3, which is now positive, because we did the work. Alright, these cancel each other out. So the answer is 2 pi over 3, positive. All right, and finally, D. D is actually tricky. It says cosine, the inside function is inverse cosine, so that's a value. And the value is pi. Pi is 3.14, etc. It goes on and on and on and on. All right, is that a value in the domain? The domain of inverse cosine is negative 1 to 1. That is 3.14, so the answer is no. It's not in the domain. So can I do this problem? I cannot. The answer is no solution. Okay, so watch out because that looked like an angle. All right, guys, uh, that's it for part two. There's going to be part three, so make sure you watch that as well.